I think between 9-11 and Abu Ghraib, we had a number of important stories sure. that we covered, and I think built a huge reputation of being a place where, I mean, we won Peabody's, we, we got, um, we started to get, I think, a bigger name because of what we were doing. Uh, but every spring, as opposed to 60 Minutes, I got nervous that we might not get renewed. You know, they could take the show off the air easily. And, you know, Les Moonves was now the boss, and he was building up television shows that were successful. So CBS was growing as a, as a, as a network from being a failure for a decade, you know. And so I got nervous every spring, and I remember saying, you know, they called Afghanistan, it was the spring offensive. I called it the spring offensive at 60 Minutes, at 60 Minutes 2. Let's come up with some stories that make it impossible for them to cancel us. Anyway, it just got everybody working a little harder, but and that's not how we got the story, but it was a source developed in a, in a, in a previous story who came to uh, Dana Roberson, our associate producer, to say, I got a story you got to look into. And she had the pictures? She well, had the photos. they didn't. Oh. She just said that, that he said there are pictures. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, feeling so strongly about it. And we got, she worked with Mary Mapes, who got involved in it. And that, I remember saying to them, just go, oh, go where you have to go to see those pictures. And it was a big trip. And they went and they came back and they said, you're not going to believe what we found. And um, it was incredible. It was really hard to believe at first. And I think that because there hadn't been a lot of U.S. Um, involvement in a full-scale war, uh, I think, shocking really, Americans would do this to people. We're prisoners. You, know, you like to think, well, you know, uh, the world's going to think more of America because they're going to meet our wonderful soldiers, you know. <laughs> and so naive. Did you believe it when you saw the pictures? No, I, I, was, I was really shocked. I mean, we all were. But we knew there was an important story to tell here. And difficult, very difficult. I mean, based on what happens to pictures, you know, it's not like getting an interview where someone's deceiving you. This is a picture that could be manipulated in some way. And... So the trick, and Patty Hassler deserves a lot of credit for this because she helped run the um, vetting of the story. And we literally vetted it for weeks and weeks and weeks, probably, you know, uh, a six-week process, making sure the pictures were authentic, double sourcing mm -hmm. the actual moment when they were taking, taken. Uh, you know, because who knows where they were, too, where they were taken. So we had to get, you know, proof of all of that. Where, where, did it, where did it happen? You know, how did it happen? Uh, and, you know, we couldn't on some of them. I remember there was a famous one where the, um, an Iraqi who was dead, who was in a bucket of ice. Well, we couldn't, we couldn't prove how did that happen. Maybe he fell down the stairs and they threw him in a bucket of ice. I don't know. Mm. He seemed to have a head injury of some kind. We couldn't get it, so we didn't report it in the first version. Um, you know, it was CBS News at its finest. It really was. And, you know, I, I have to say that to this day, it annoys me that some of the people inside were critical in retrospect of the way it was handled. Um, Dan was critical, and it was a, I think it was one of his highest moments that we held the story for two right. weeks. Now, we didn't hold the story. We, we, we could have run it, but it would have been unfinished because we asked the military for us the Defense Department. Yeah, for a spokesman. And I had the conversations with the Air Force, I mean the Army. And the Army asked us, they said, we'll give you somebody, but not this week because we have prisoners in Fallujah. And we would appreciate it if we could do the interview next week. And that's the end. And I, so I talked to Dan, I talked to Andrew Hayward, who was president of CBS News, and we felt strongly that we should, we should acquiesce. We, and we knew nobody else was on the story. So then what happened next was that um, I was expecting, and I called the Army, let's go, we do the interview on Monday, we'll air the story on Wednesday, and they said, uh, okay. And then Dan Rather got a call from the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, personally, saying, please hold the story for another week. And, um. and I said, uh, you know, Dan called me, he said, geez, Jeff, I've never had a call like that, but they're worried that people are going to get killed. Because, they were hostages. Yeah, they were hostages. 
and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs. So I said, okay, Dan, I'll do it. We'll hold it for another week. We needed the interview. Um, and then the next Monday, I, I remember just saying, I said to the, uh, and Mary Mapes talks about this in her book, um, that because she was outside, I got into an argument with the Pentagon spokesman, uh, chief of staff he was actually, that uh, we're not going to wait any longer. Get us an interview. We're going to put it on Wednesday whether we have the interview or not. Anyway, the next, like three hours later, I got a call. We did the interview and put the story on. So. It's not nearly as simple as, well, we just held it out of fear. We knew we were alone. Mm -hmm. uh, then um, we found out later, uh, the, after the second Wednesday, that Cy Hirsch of The New Yorker had gotten a hold of some of the photos and was going to work on a story. We knew that Wednesday we were going to lose our exclusivity. And uh, I know for a fact that he got those pictures from members of our team. So I didn't find that out until a couple of years ago. But the actual journalism, the actual decisions that were made, I, I, I regret nothing. It was, I think, the proudest moment of CBS News. And Don Hewitt said, that's the best story that's ever been done in 60 Minutes. I, I'm not sure I agree with that. I think at the end of the day, tobacco was, but tobacco was so tainted by the mm. fights that they had that um, probably Abu Ghraib was right up there at the very top.